Mother, are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest-selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes. And by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. of good citizenship, according to one James Anderson, lies not only in doing one's part toward the betterment of his society, but in volunteering to do one's part, not sitting back and waiting to be asked. As a matter of fact, this was the subject of a lecture delivered to his children one evening last week in the White Frame House on Maple Street. But that was last week. This evening, Jim has forgotten the whole thing as he sits in the den, scanning the newspaper while his helpmate Margaret sits nearby with a darning basket full of socks. Like this. Jim. Hmm? I know I've asked you this before, dear, but I've never really gotten a satisfactory answer. What's that, dear? Please tell me, how do you manage to wear your socks out in the arches? Oh, Margaret, I don't do that. Well, just look at this sock. Must be faulty workmanship. Nobody could possibly wear socks out in the arch. Hmm. Well, that's why I want to know how you do it. I must ask Mrs. Davis if Ed does that. Oh, now, don't go spreading that all over the neighborhood. Mommy! You know, you ought to let someone check your feet sometime, like, uh, say, the Smithsonian Institute. Mommy, hmm. where's Daddy? Oh, hello, Daddy. Hello, kitten. Say, Daddy, do you remember that talk you gave us about citizens and all that? Citizenship? Yeah, that's it. I certainly do. I keep hoping that it sunk in a little bit. I remembered it. Good. At our Robins meeting after school today, we heard about a family that moved here, and their daddy can't get any work, and they need help. So, I did like you said, Daddy. I volunteered to help them. Well, that's real nice, Kathy. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. If everyone would willingly and voluntarily do his little bit for the community, this would be a better world to live in. How do you propose to help this family, Kathy? I volunteered that old tan suit of Daddy's. You did what? They said it just fed him, too. Wait a minute. You mean you gave my good suit away? Oh, dear, that wasn't your good suit. Well, I still wear it. It was a wonderful piece of material. Good herringbone pattern. Did I do wrong, Daddy? Well... You said you wanted us to volunteer. Yes, well, that's right. I do want you to, but after this, I wish you'd check with me before you go around volunteering my good clothes. He, uh... He's already got the suit, huh? Uh-huh. And the hat, too. <laughs> the hat? Not my brown one. Uh-huh. Good. You looked awful in that hat. It was comfortable. Takes a long time to break a hat in to where it really feels good on you. Daddy, do you want me to just forget all that stuff you told us? No, 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 no. I want you to remember all that stuff and put it into action. But uh, check with me first. Yes, Daddy. Well, now that that's settled, I want you to go upstairs and start getting ready for bed, Kathy. Ah, oh, gee, it's early, Mommy. I know it, but I want you to wash your hair. Do I have to? I don't know where you Robins hold your meetings, but it must be in a sand pit. Now, you get upstairs and shampoo your head real good. Okay. <laughs> well, looks like your words of wisdom the other night made quite an impression after all. Yeah, it's too good an impression. I always felt good in that suit. Oh, Jim, stop worrying about that suit. It was time you stopped wearing it. Everyone around town was beginning to think that was the only suit you had. Well, suits have a certain feel to them. Some of them give a man a sense of confidence. Never get another one that hung like that on me. I hope not. <laughs> Dad! Seems like I've lost an old friend. Dad! In the den, bud. Oh, hi. Where was our wandering boy been tonight? Oh, junior high Y. Well, good. What's new with the high Y crowd? Oh, we're going to have a big affair and, and invite all the dads. The junior high Y hijinks. Pretty good name, huh? Great. Uh, there's something I want to check with you, Dad. Okay, go ahead and check. Well, it came up about having entertainment at this thing. You know, get up some acts and junk. Uh-huh. 
and they needed somebody to be the head of it, and nobody said anything. And then I remembered what you said the other night about volunteering and being a good citizen and all that, and... Well, I'm glad to hear that you remembered, bud. Doing one's part voluntarily and cheerfully makes for a better society. Yeah. So you volunteered, huh? Well, yeah, in a way. Uh, I told them I wanted to check with you first. Oh, it's perfectly all right with me. You sure now? Oh, yes. In fact, I think it's a good idea. Well, swell. I'll call Joe Phillips and tell him it's all set. Uh, Joe's the head general chairman. I see. Okay to use the phone in here? Sure, go ahead. You won't bother us. Okay. I'm glad to see Bud take an active part in things. He needs to be a little more aggressive. Yes. He's inclined to sit back and let someone else be the leader. Hello, Joe. Bud. You home? So am I. <laughs> I always liked that intelligent conversation he and Joe had. <laughs> well, yeah, Joe. Uh, that's what I called you up about. I just talked to Dad, and he said he'd be happy to head up the entertainment. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, he was all for it, so it's all set, Joe. Now, wait a minute. Well, okay, Joe. See you tomorrow. Bye. Now, just a second, bud. Let me get this straight. I thought you were volunteering for this job. Well, yeah. I volunteered you. <laughs> Would you explain that just a little more fully? Well, you see, Dad, we're going to have the dads at this hijack. Yes, yes, I got that. And like last year, we decided to put them on different committees. And I volunteered you for the entertainment. Oh, me. Well, can't you unvolunteer me? Well, you said it was all right before I called Joe, and he's already put you down for it. Oh, that's just dandy. Doing one's part voluntarily and cheerfully makes for better society. All right, Margaret. Well, what acts do you think you'll get up, Dad? I don't know. Well, you better get to work on it right away because they want to pin up a program for it. Uh-huh. Look, Bud, don't you think it would be better if you boys did all the work yourselves? Oh, no, this is a tradition. What is? Working the dads in on this thing. Last year, they said Ollie Ziegler's dad headed up the entertainment, and it was the best they ever had. They're still talking about it. They are, huh? Yeah, but I told them you'd do even better. Well, Bud, I appreciate your loyalty and all well, that, Well, uh, I gotta get upstairs. Got some homework to do. Well, wait, Bud. Sure was keen of you to volunteer, Dad. Yeah, wasn't it? Night. Hmm. Judging from the results of that uh, citizenship speech you made to the children, it must have been one of the best of your career. Well, it's still the right idea. It was just misinterpreted. Exactly what kind of uh, entertainment are you going to put on? Going to work up a few acrobatic stunts? All right, don't rub it in. Mother! Where's she been, out with Ralph again? No, I think she's just been to the library. Where are you, Mother? In the den, Betty. Oh, Mother, it looks like I'm... Oh, I didn't know you were in here, Father. Why, do you want to talk to your mother? Oh, no. No, I want to talk to you, too. I want your advice. Uh-oh. What trouble am I in now? Well, you're not in any trouble, Father. Well, just how am I involved in whatever this is? Well, you're not involved at all. Well, that's the first good news I've had all day. Sit down. This I want to hear. Are you in any trouble, Betty? Well, not exactly, but it looks like I'm going to be a witness. A witness? What kind of a witness? A regular kind, you know, in court. Oh, dear. It happened on the way home from the library. I was just getting ready to cross Oak Street when these two cars bumped into each other. What two cars? Well, I don't know exactly. Bob Reynolds and some woman. Who's Bob Reynolds? Mother, he's a senior at college, and he has the most wonderful brown eyes you've ever seen. <laughs> Actually, Mother, I mean, they're utterly penetrating. All right, we know about his eyes, but who is he? <laughs> they're, they're penetrating, but yet... They're friendly at the same time. Oh, fine. You're going to make a wonderful witness. <laughs> I hope so, for his sake. Betty, how are you involved in this? You, you weren't in the accident, were you? Oh, no, no, I just witnessed it. Was anyone hurt? No. It didn't do the cars any good, though. Well, you didn't have anything to do with it. No, but I'm signed up. He took my name. Reynolds did? Yes, Father. At first, I was going to hurry away so I wouldn't get involved... But then I remembered what you said about being a good citizen and volunteering to help. I see. So when Bob jumped out of his car and he came over toward me, I just stood there and gave him my name and my address. You know. You'd have been better off if you just walked away. No, Margaret, that's where you're wrong. Betty did the right thing. I've never seen such wonderful eyes before. <laughs> As an insurance man, I know how hard it is to get witnesses in these accident cases. 
Everyone is afraid of being dragged into court. And that's an entirely wrong attitude. Well, what I meant, dear, We should be was... willing and eager to volunteer any information that will aid justice being done. We agree, dear. Well, it's true. You did the right thing, Betty. I'm proud of you. Well, thanks, Father. But creepers, I don't know what I'll say when I get on the witness stand. Well, that's nothing to worry about. You just tell the truth. Well, yes, but... Anyway, chances are the case will never get to court. Most of these cases are settled by the insurance companies. Were there any other witnesses? No, I was the only one. Well, then, Mr. Brown Eyes is practically a cinch. One witness, if there's only one, carries a lot of weight. Well, I hope so. He was so nice. But in any event, just tell the truth. Well, the only trouble is, I, I'm not sure what is the truth. What do you mean? Well, when Bob took down my name, he asked me if I saw the woman go through a red light, and I said yes, and he put that down, too. Well, that's all right. But after I got thinking about it, I couldn't remember whether the light was red or green. <laughs> I don't even remember seeing a traffic light. <laughs> oh, fine. All I remember is those deep brown eyes. Well, I wouldn't worry. Sounds like that woman hasn't a chance. It'll never go to court. <gasps> That's probably the court now with the summons for me. No, it isn't. Hello? Oh, yes, Mrs. Paisley. Oh? When was that? I see. Well, you come in in the morning and make a full report to Mr. Roberts. He's in charge of that. Oh? Well, we'll do what we can, Mrs. Paisley. And we'll see you in the morning. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, me. Who's Mrs. Paisley? She happens to be a very big insurance client of mine. And she also happens to be the woman who was involved in that accident with brown eyes. <laughs> oh, really? Your client? And according to her, it was Brown Eyes who ran the signal, not her. Did she say that? Yes. And she said there was a girl who saw the accident, and if we can locate that girl, she'll prove it was Reynolds' fault. Oh, no. And I thought this was one good deed that I wouldn't be involved in. <laughs> Me and my big, fat lectures. <laughs> Father's little lecture on citizenship, his claim that you get a good feeling out of helping others, seems to be getting unexpected results. But there are other ways of making yourself feel good, too. Yes, life is swell when you feel well. And that's why so many women have been serving Bran with its important keep regular benefits. Perhaps you've given it to the family for breakfast, but found that they weren't keen about the flavor. Well, that's all been changed because something wonderful has happened to Bran. You see, now, new Post 40% Bran Flakes have a delicious new flavor, a magic oven flavor, and crisper texture that's really appetizing. And it's these two things, marvelous flavor and tempting texture, that makes a lot of folks say that new Post Bran Flakes is their favorite cereal. So now, if you serve Post 40% Bran Flakes in your home, you'll know that the whole family is getting their ounce of prevention, their keep regular benefits, in one of the best tasting cereals ever made. Doesn't this make sense, Mother? I think so. And I hope that it persuades you to start serving post-40% bran flakes regularly. For goodness sake, eat post bran flakes. So good and so good for you. Mother, when you shop this weekend... Be sure to buy new Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. They're good, and so good for you. Even though Jim Anderson still feels that the basis of good citizenship lies in voluntary performance of one's civic duties, he regrets having pounded home the message so firmly. In each instance where the children tried to carry out his advice, the civic duty somehow involved him. It's noon of the next day now, and as Margaret and Betty await the arrival of the other members of the family for lunch, Margaret has a few words of advice for her eldest daughter, like this. Betty, you've just got to stop worrying about this witness business. You're going to make yourself sick. I know it, but I can't help it, Mother. Your father says hardly any of these cases ever go to court anyway now, so forget it. I'll try. If you were to be called as a witness, you'd have heard by now. But if I am called, I just don't know what to say. 
If I'm on Bob Reynolds' side, why, then Father's insurance company will lose the case. Well, don't worry about that. I'm sure that's all in a day's work for an insurance company. That's what they're in business for. What kind of a daughter would I be testifying against my own father's company? Mm. Well, help me set the table and forget it, will you? But on the other hand, if I testify for father, then I'll betray poor Bob. And he has such beautiful eyes. <laughs> well, Betty, honey, you can't switch around and testify for whomever you please. All you can do is tell the truth. That's another thing. I'm not sure what actually happened. Mother, I just can't go through with this. Hi, Mommy. Lunch ready? Mm, almost, Kathy. By the time you wash your hands, it will be. Hi, Betty. You been to court yet? No. When do you go? Can I come and watch? Kathy, don't talk about it. Just go and wash. Hi, Mom. Dad home yet? Not yet, bud. I wish she'd hurry. They want to know what acts he's worked up for the hijinks. Betty, will you have to say if you're guilty or not guilty? Mother, will you please make her keep quiet? Oh, turn blue. <laughs> Girls, girls. What's all this squabble about? Is it about Betty going to jail? I'm not going to jail. I'm going to court. Well, practically the same thing. It is not. All right, children, let's don't start a fight. I think I heard your father come in the front door. Oh, boy, I've got to get on him right away about those acts. I hope he's still speaking to me. Oh, Betty, stop that. Hello, Jim. Well, you look tired. No, I'm not tired. I just had a sort of an undermining experience this morning. You say, Dad. Hello, son. Well, what happened, dear? Dad. Oh, it seems that word has gotten all over town that the insurance company's gone on the rocks and I'm out of a job. What? Oh, gee, Father, is it on account of losing the Reynolds case? No, 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 we haven't lost any case, and it has nothing to do with that. Dad. What caused the whole thing is that suit of mine Kathy gave away. Oh, say, I heard today that the man was real awful thankful for the suit. Said it just fit him peachy. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Dad. Dear, I don't follow this at all. What happened? Well, I got a strange phone call from Ed Grayson this morning, offering me a job at his place. A job? And right on top of that, Ray Dickens called and said they might have a place for me in their organization. Well, that's strange. Dad. And then I uh, <laughs> finally found out through a grapevine of secretaries that Grayson saw this fellow wearing my suit and hat in the line at the unemployment bureau. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was me. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> well, this is no laughing matter, Margaret. That sort of thing doesn't help a man's business standing, especially when he gets spread all over town. Oh, it's not all over town. Apparently just two people know it. Well, you know how that kind of news spreads. <laughs> Dad. What is it, bud? Well, Dad, I I've Father, got to know... Father, you didn't explain what happened in the accident case. Holy cow. Oh, I don't know, Betty. Roberts is handling that. He's taking it up with a man from Reynolds Insurance Company this noon. Is that when they decide if it goes to court? Possibly, but I don't think it will. Dad. Will they call me in right away? I said I don't think it'll go to court. However, you could be of value in helping settle it, though. There seems to be a wide difference of opinion on what happened. Who entered the intersection first, Reynolds or Mrs. Paisley? Um, I think it was Mrs. Paisley. Well, good. Or maybe it was Bob Reynolds. Oh, fine. I know it was one or the other. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're sure of something. Dad. Which would be better for Bob? Betty, that's not quite the way cases are conducted. Mm. That's what I've been trying to tell her. All you have to do is switch around on your testimony just once, and you can be convicted of perjury. Really? Can I go and visit Betty in jail? <laughs> Kathy, child, for goodness sake, stop talking like that. Dad. Betty's worried herself half sick as it is. But don't worry her anymore. Dad. If they call me, I just don't know what I'll do. Kathy. What do you want, bud? Nothing. I just wanted to see if somebody would talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. What do you want? Well, it's about the hijinks entertainment, Dad. Oh, that. Uh, they want to pin up programs, and they have to know what acts you've got lined up right away. They do, huh? Yeah, you haven't got a whole lot of time left. How much time have I got? Uh, 11 minutes. What? Well, the deadline is at 12.30. They're gonna call here and get the list from you. Oh, me. Well, what funny acts have you thought up so far, Dad? Uh, so far? Yeah. Well, Bud, to be honest, I haven't had a minute's time to even think about it. You haven't? Dad, the deadline is 12.30. Yes, I know that. Uh... Maybe we could, uh... Well, how about that quartet at my lodge? 
They have a couple of comedy numbers and... They had them last year. Oh. Well, the Masterson family all play harmonicas. They, they have a little band. And had them last year. Oh. Well, uh... How about... Had them last year. <laughs> when will I tell you who I was going to suggest? Well, who is it? Uh, well, I hadn't really thought up anybody yet. <laughs> I'm sure they had them last year anyway. I don't know whether you two impresarios know it or not, but while this weighty discussion is going on, your food's on the table and everything's getting cold. I'm eating. Well, good for you, Kathy. She's the only normal one around here. Did you hear that, Bud? I'm normal. So what? <laughs> Betty, please sit down and try to eat a little something. It might make you feel better. Oh, I just don't feel like it, Mother. I don't know what I'll do when they call me. They're not going to. Tell them you're sick in bed. Mm, fat lot of good that'd do. I seen pictures in the paper where they haul witnesses into court on stretchers. Daddy, you better get to thinking. Deadline's getting close. I'm thinking. How about the... Uh... Oh, gosh, that's them. What are you going to tell them, Dad? Oh, that's for me. I know it is. Father, what am I going to tell them? Well, someone better answer that or there won't be anybody there to tell anything to. Say, that's a good idea. I'll get it. Oh, she would. Hello? Who? Oh, I wish I weren't here. Oh, yes. Think fast, Dad. You gotta tell him something. Just a minute. Oh, dear, I don't know what to tell him. Sit down, Betty. It's not for you. Daddy, it's for you. Me? It's the program committee, Dad. Well, but I don't know what to tell them. Well, make up something. They're depending on you. Mm. Hello. Who did you say this was? The Unemployment Bureau. <laughs> Yes, this is Jim Anderson, but I don't know anyone by that name. Potter, did you say? Oh, Daddy, Daddy, that's the man. Just a minute. What did you say, Kathy? Mr. Potter, that's the man I gave your soup to. Oh. That's him. Well, he gave my name as a reference. I don't even know him. Jim, he's probably desperate, and he's only trying to get started. But go see who's at the front door. Okay. Hello? Well, yes, I have a sort of a connection with this man, Potter. I uh, didn't place him for a minute there. I see. Well, what kind of work is he looking for? Uh-huh. What uh, experience has he had? Uh, what kind of jobs has he held? It's for you, Betty. Some geek by the name of Reynolds. Reynolds? Oh, Mother, they've come for me. <laughs> well, for heaven's sakes, it's not as bad as all that. Go in there and talk to him. Oh, I can't. I just can't. Uh, just a minute, sir. Will you please stop all that moaning? I can't hear a thing on the phone. Go in there, Betty, and talk to him. This doesn't mean you're going to jail or anything. If you do, I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> oh, you keep quiet. All right, now, I wonder if you'd repeat that list. I'll bet the program committee's trying to call us right now. Wait a minute, what was that last one? Are you sure about that? Well, does he still have all the equipment or, or whatever he used? Ask if he still likes his suit. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, would you give me his phone number? Oh, well, then give me his address. I'll go over and see him. I know where he lives. 1814 South Menlo. All right, fine. And thanks for calling. Goodbye. Dad, look at the clock. 1230. What do you say about him, Jim? Does he still like his suit? Well, now, wait one at a time. Uh-oh, that's them, Dad. What are we going to do? Go ahead and answer it. Well, okay. Tell us about Mr. Potter, Jim. Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, just a minute. Well, Dad, it's the program committee... Fine. Tell them that the show will be headlined by a sensational comedy juggling act that once played the old Palace Theater in New York. Are you kidding? No. The name of the act is Potter and Patter. Potter? Tell them that, bud. Okay. Hey, Dad says the show's going to be a sensational act from New York. Potter and Patter. Is this true, Jim? Yes. Potter's an old vaudevillian and evidently was pretty good in his day. Yeah, comedy and juggling and everything. His wife works the act with him. Got that? Okay, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, boy, did that set their old ears flapping, especially when I said New York. Yes, that's a magic word. Boy, you sure did it, Dad. I gotta hand it to you. Well, thank you, son. Lucky I gave Mr. Potter that suit, wasn't it, Daddy? Yes, kitten, luckiest thing in the world. Mother! Mother! Oh, dear, poor Betty. I hope this thing doesn't upset her too much. Mother, guess what? I'm going with Bob Reynolds. To court? No. To jail? No, to the Terra Supper Club. <laughs> Not a place for a trial. Well, there's no trial. He said that was all settled by the insurance companies. 
And, Father, you know those wonderful brown eyes of his? And by now, who doesn't? They're not brown at all. They're blue. <laughs> oh, me. Couldn't even get that right. <laughs> And now, before our final surprise of the show, let's join Margaret and Betty in the kitchen. Betty, where's the new jar of postum I asked you to get? Oh, oh, I forgot all about it and the excitement and all. I'm... Well, you better get some before supper. You know how your father loves his postum. You can't blame Jim Anderson either. Postum is a mighty comforting drink, especially at night. For you see, unlike coffee and tea, instant postum contains no caffeine. Nothing to keep you awake or make you nervous. Now, of course, caffeine doesn't bother many people. But then why take chances? Maybe it does bother you. So how about joining Jim and the millions of others who drink caffeine-free Postum regularly? Well, Jim Sage's words regarding true citizenship finally paid off, as Jim now steadfastly maintains he always knew they would. The Junior High Y hijinks with its entertainment chairman, James Anderson, is now a matter of record. As a matter of fact, one of the best reports on it was delivered by Jim himself to his wife as he prepared for bed after the hijinks that night. It, uh, went something like this. And you should have heard the applause, Margaret. They wouldn't let the Potters get off the stage. Oh, I'm so happy it turned out that way. And after the thing was over, they voted this the best show they ever had. Even better than last year. I'll bet Bud was proud of you. Yeah, his eyes really sparkled. That was worth the whole thing. Even worth volunteering for? Hmm? Uh, definitely. <laughs> but, Margaret, the greatest thrill of all was seeing the look in the eyes of the Potters while they were performing. It seemed as though they were suddenly living again. I wish I could have seen it. I wish so, too. And, uh, you know that suit I was moaning about losing? Yes. Well, it never looked better than it did tonight. Never. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Dorothy Lovett, Mary Lee Robb, and Helen Strom. It's the best hot cereal you ever ate. Post Wheat Meal, the best hot cereal you ever ate. And Post Wheat Meal is the cereal that saves you 10 cents. That's right. You save a dime. There's a coupon inside the box of Post Wheat Meal. Just take this coupon to your grocer, and he'll give you 10 cents towards the purchase of another box of delicious hot Post Wheat Meal, a money-saving way for you to try a most nutritious cereal. Hot Post Wheat Meal. The best hot cereal you ever ate. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. When you drive too fast for winter's road conditions, you are gambling with your life and the lives of others. Join America's professional truck drivers in their current crusade against excessive speed and help reduce traffic accidents. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.